welcome back to my channel. Today I want to answer one of the questions I got in last week's video about processed versus packaged foods. Basically, is seltzer bad for you? My first instinct is, yeah, it's bad for you. Only because, to me, it's a processed food. It's not really something I could make at home. Yes, you can do the carbonation part at home, but the natural flavors part, I don't know how to make that. I did some research and I dug up quite a bit of information for and against it, which was really interesting. So thank you for asking this question. In general, nutrition is a science, of course. So research is kind of all over the place. For, against, some of the studies are really small, some of them are bigger, and you can interpret any study you want in your favor if you do it right. So I did find one tiny little study that was done that said that seltzer can actually improve your heart health by lowering your cholesterol. I do find it funny because they, um, LaCroix put that on the box. So that's right here, cheer your health. Now your heart has a soulmate. So this was based on one study, one tiny little study, and they interpreted it and put it on their box, on their branding. I mean, good for them, they're using the data to their advantage. Um, but in general, anything that has a health claim on it, I don't really trust. Just know that. So a couple of the positives about seltzer. Um, yeah, if you're quitting soda, it's an awesome option because it's way better, it's way less processed. It kinda does give you that fizz that you're missing if you're cutting out soda, which is really great. It can also make you feel more full. So if you're trying to cut calories and you're having a hard time feeling full, you could drink some seltzer to feel fuller. I would suggest just eating more vegetables and actually feel full, but hey, everybody's different. To counter that, I found research that said that seltzer can actually make you more hungry in general, and then you end up eating more calories at the end of the day because of it. If there's one pro, there's always two cons or vice versa. Okay, so it's carbonated. It can make you feel gassy or bloated. And if you have IBS, it can exacerbate symptoms or it can trigger flare-ups. So be careful if you notice that you have, you know, a couple of spritzers one day or you're having extra seltzer and all of a sudden you're running to the bathroom, maybe cut back. Oh, and this one's actually, well, I was gonna say a fun fact, but it's actually not so fun. So this is something that I found years ago and I was trying to find it again on my computer today, but I could not find it. But if you are having a lot of yeast infections, seltzer could be kind of playing a role in that. I think the research was basically that seltzer is a tiny bit acidic, so it can alter the pH in your body. Other research says that that's not possible, but if you're drinking a ton of it, and you're getting yeast infections often, then cut it out and see what happens. It's worth a shot. Okay, and then there was also some research saying that it can ruin the enamel on your teeth, and some say it doesn't. I don't know, I don't, I've never seen any research saying that plain tap water could affect tooth enamel. So, there we go. <laughs> if there's any research out there saying it's gonna rot my teeth, then I don't know. I probably wouldn't drink too much of it. Okay, so now I want to talk about the natural flavors. So on the can, it says carbonated water, natural flavor. I dug up some research on the natural flavor and basically it's like super vague, super like whatever. A lot of the stuff I found said that natural flavor is basically the same as artificial flavor. So it's really no better because it's been treated and it's chemically processed. Basically anything goes. Like if, if you're using some sort of flavor from like tree bark or beaver butt, because they do. That's considered a natural flavor. Beaver, it, it was like anal secretions or secretions, secretions, secretions from the anal gland of beaver butts. So if you're not cool with that, <laughs> don't eat anything that says natural flavor. Just so you know. Oh, and I, okay, so I read one thing and I did copy it down and I put links below for all the research that I dug up, but it said the FDA considers more than 3,000 chemical food additives to be natural flavors. So, natural flavors, 
I don't trust it. If you want seltzer, I would do it at home. So you can buy one of those soda machines. I don't have one, so I don't really know how it works, but um, I know plenty of people have them and like them. So maybe you could try something like that and then add your own flavor, maybe a little bit of mashed strawberry or some squeezed lemon or lime. And one more thing about the natural flavors. So that I also found that if you have any specific food allergies, if you're eating something that has natural flavors and you're having a reaction, there's like no way to know what was in there that triggered it. If you're having allergic reactions and you're drinking seltzer, just stop drinking it completely because you don't know what's in it. And this goes for anything that has natural flavor in it because there's no regulation. They, these companies don't have to report what flavor they're putting in. So the best thing to do is just completely cut out natural flavors. So the bottom line is basically tap water, fresh spring water is best. And if you wanna have seltzer, just have it sometimes. Don't drink it all day long. Don't have too much. Um, save it for special occasions. And if you're dying for it, try to make it at home. And if you do, let me know, because I would love to see how it's done. So that's it. If you guys have any other questions, leave it in the comments below. I would love to know what's on your minds.